So massive welcome back and thank you for coming back to watching this version of Mobile Reasoning with Good News Jamaica. This time we're going to be talking about the Jamaica National Heroes Modernization Project. And we have the creator and we have the director here and we're just going to go into it and figure out this project. We're going to get as much information so that you can go and be a part of it. So we'll jump right into Mobile Reasoning. Gentlemen, welcome to Mobile Reasoning. How Charles, let's start with start with you. How you doing, man? We're tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that you've been going hard for a while. Yeah, man, we've been going, working on this thing, night and day, pouring ourselves into making sure that thing happens. So, you know, the entire team, all of us. So, um, it's a label of love, though. We are happily. Um, putting our energy and time into meeting the target that we have for June 9th. <clears throat> and the, so June 9th is a target. How long have you all been going? So we started this project back in fall of last year. Um, okay. At first, it was just an idea. Um, and I made a phone call. It came up when I was painting one of the, um, the national heroes, um, Marco Scarby. And in the painting, I um, just had an idea about, man, we need to do something that's bigger than this. I called up on my friend, I told him about it, called somebody else. And before you know it, one phone call, that's another phone call, that's another phone call, that's to this massive team now of over 100 people working on this project as contributors and producers and directors and all the massive that we have um, behind it. So we have been working on this for eight or nine months at this point. So a lot of work has gone into it. More recently, we decided to kick off this Kickstarter event, which is um, a 30-day campaign that we need to raise at least $50,000, which is where we're at right now. And that is basically, I think, why all of us are tired because we've been going night and day, um, not just raising the money, but building and creating awareness about the project. So people are aware of what we're doing and know what we are doing. And they can, you know, people want to get behind someone and believe in, right? So we want to make sure that we connect with them and not just like, hey, give me your money, bye-bye, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I noticed that um, you guys are heavy into building the public relationship with this project to get to 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 make sure you get public buy in, because, I mean, you could go to corporate Jamaica and get the money um, or you could go to some entity that is giving film money, fil film uh, money and, and you'll be fine. But mm -hmm. you are definitely trying to make a relationship with the public. Tell me, tell me, um, Onif. Where did the concept come from and how, how is it that the, the vision of how to depict what the project is turning into, how did that happen? You've got the man right there <laughs> in terms of where the project came from. It's his uh -huh. idea. He spearheaded that idea and he spearheaded the idea of going to the public. He wanted to make sure that the public was also interested in their own history their own story, their own everything. You know, it's the idea of not feeding somebody something. It's it's not saying, oh, um, uh, I can lead, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force them to drink. That's that fundamental. He wanted you to also drink from that well and say, listen, I'm, I'm showing you that your history is so wonderful and it's so amazing and so expressive. And you don't have to go look at somebody else's history to understand that the past that you had and that, that was built up and, and layered, right? It's um, people forgot the treasures that are buried in their past and other people are coming by and saying, ooh, you got something really, 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 really good over there. And I want it. And he wanted to, to say, no, th th those are our treasures. You just, we just forgot them because we thought your stuff was better than ours. And so that, that's all his idea. And that's how I decided to uh, jump on the project and say, yeah, yeah, I, this is my history. This is my everything. I want to work on it. So that, you point that at him there and see what he gives you as the answer. <laughs> well, I wanted, I wanted to ask you first because I want, to, I want to ask Charles, why do you see it so important? I mean, we've been going all these years and it's been going on and we're good. So why do you think it's so important that we know go back and make our national heroes a thing that is modernized. Charles, you, you, you know I'm going to stop talking. Mm. You don't want me to stop talking. You don't mm. put a like that to me unless you don't want me to stop talking. I wanted to tell me about it. 
I want you to tell me about it. <laughs> because, all right, so this for me is legacy. And I explain it like that. Is my this is a moment that didn't happen overnight. I'm not born and come so. Right? I'm not born and wake up and can talk and walk and talk English and know for daughter something, can cook or do nothing, right? I learned my past helped me to get to here. And so my past is not just me and the life I've lived, but it's a life that put people who lived before me lived. And so I got a chance to really understand that firsthand when I went to Africa and connected back to my father. I'm Sierra Leonean um, on my father's side and Jamaican on my mother's side. But I was born and raised in Jamaica and connected with my African roots, Sierra Leonean roots in 2005 when I went back to see my father before he passed away. And that is when I understood my history and where we come from in a deeper way. My great, great grandfather is a national hero in Sierra Leone, one of the 50 greatest men of Sierra Leone. That's the 50 greatest men, Gumbu Smart is his name. You Google him, he's in history books, the pages and pages of Google. You can see the history of my family is documented. Don't my father who left a legacy because he was a trade attaché, an ambassador, and represented his country at the highest level as a parliamentarian and was really close friends and instrumental in helping the former president of the Sierra Leone to become president. So that's my, where may I come from <laughs> mm. on that side. And even though I connected with it late, I understood the power of that. And I tell people all the time, I understand what it feels like to understand nepotism and blonde hair, blue eyed living like you know, a whiter person in America, right? Because I lived it. When I went back to Africa to start business in 2009, I saw the power of saying that my name was Kumbu Smart and how that basically translated into people saying, okay, we know who your daddy is, or your dad did this and him do that and this and that. And how that legacy automatically connected with, oh yeah, man, come in. So it made me think about that in a deeper way of what I leave behind. Cause even though he's dead, I was living his legacy. So I lived legacy to understand it from a first-hand perspective in a very real way. And that has shaped so much of my life over the years. When I started painting, I thought about how can I use my art to help to make an impact? And I started using my art all over the world. I've lived in China, I've lived in London, I've lived in Sierra Leone, I've lived here in the States, I've lived in Jamaica. So I've also had a chance to see Black people everywhere in the world I've, I've been to. And seeing people like that and seeing how we are represented you kind of know, say, boy, we have the <laughs> we have the underhand. We have enough work for though. And no matter, you know, whether it's Paris and you see them walking around, the Africans are coming over there and begging on the streets, or it's how them treat them underhandedly with the racism in England, or how the Chinese look at it and expect the okay, them kind of primitive, not racist, but that's a that's their outlook on us because of what how they're been programmed with Africa. And of course, living here in America and how you know all that stuff is shaped out image in my mind that was we have to do something about ourselves and who we are in order to change that and so when George Floyd murder happened last year was my tipping point mm. it was the point where I had a three-year-old daughter two, two plus year old daughter at the time she just turned three by the way a few days ago we're in Disney World, Disney World with her <laughs> but um you know it made me start thinking about, she has made me start thinking about my legacy a lot more, right? What rooms are, is she gonna walk into when I'm gone? And because she say, my name is so-and-so, right? What kind of impact is she going to be able to have on the world? And what inspiration is she gonna draw that from, right? And so when that George Floyd thing happened, it made me think about black people all over the world collectively and where we are, what we're doing. I'm say, man, I have to do something about this. I created a painting, I created a docu series. I'm gonna start thinking about the whole thing and then automatically took, led me back to Marcus Garvey. And Marcus Garvey's message about black empowerment, unity, coming together, creating economic empowerment for ourselves where we are owning our own content was important but not just owning our content from a property perspective, but also owning our identity. Our identity for so long was defined by those other people who wrote books to tell us who we were and then took the images 
and the writings that we wrote down, destroy them, misconstrue them, told it back to us in undermining ways that made them look like the powers and then put us in a perspective that was inferior. And so we read those books and hear about ourselves in this one single way all the time. You grow up subconsciously thinking that's who you are. You grow up subconsciously believing that those stories that they're telling you about who you are really connect and that's not who we are. And so Marcus Garvey's message about ownership was also about owning our identity and our story. It was about owning our cultures. It was about understanding. He has that simple quote everybody know, but I don't think they understand the root of it. A people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots, right? I understood that when my father told me my story about my great-great-grandfather. I may know how that changed me on the inside. Mm -hmm. I may know how that shift me. And I know that literally telling our stories is a very important part because if he never told me that story, I would not have had that shift. Mm -hmm. So I know that if we are not telling our stories from our perspective, nobody can tell you, Charles, why you have this show. What motivated you to do it? Them can say, yeah, Charles had a show called Good, no Good News Jamaica. Facts, right? And these were the things that you put out about it. But them can't know on the inside, deep inside you, what caused you to do it. And so this project gives us an opportunity to curate our story, tell it from our perspective. So nobody else on the outside is not telling us who we are, but we are the ones who are defining who we are. And as a result, telling a story that will leave a legacy. So next generation can come on now and latch on to something that's really authentic and not somebody else's perception of us. So that's a long winded answer for where we are, but that is what at the crux has brought me to that moment to do this project right now. And I, and I wanted to make sure that you got all of that out because it is important um, that the viewers um, see and hear what your heart was saying about what we need because a whole heap of we are saying the same thing. When we have discussions about our curriculum in schools and mm -hmm. the fact that schools now have, are basically just placeholders for our children, um, you know, them, them not learning anything that is going to make them into better people. They're just, they're just being given information to fill up their heads so they can take an exam. But get it, but understand. Um, Onif, one of the ways that the Jamaican culture over the years has been kept solid is by storytelling, right? We have been an, um, an oral society from day one, right? We have also been known to be able to tell our story in a creative way that, you know, we assign characters to it. We do all kinds of different things to, to make it hit the, hit the mark regardless of when it is being told, right? You as a director, um, on the project, and I don't want to give away the, what it's going to look like, but how did you see it? How did it, once you heard it coming from Charles and what Charles Hart was saying, how was it, start, how, how was it unfolding in your brain now to the point where you said, no, sir, I must upon this? <laughs> it, didn't take him, it didn't take him much to, to uh, uh, you know, for me to go, yes, even though when he mentioned it, right, he, he said, I would like to talk to you. We were shadow boxing each other for like a month, per se, to try to feel out each other, who we are, the whole work. So it didn't take long. So once we sat down and we had a, a Zoom just like this, it didn't take much for him to say a few words. And my brain was like, I'm in. I was already in. We were just sitting there talking and I'm not letting them. So we just seeing how things were. And I was already like, OK, I'm in this boat. Let's go paddle. I'm paddling with you. Let's go. So that mm -hmm. wasn't anything. So in my brain, visually, I'm a director that um, it's all about feeling, right? And so what I did bring additional to the project, because he had three tenants. It was Anthony Bourdain, Trevor Noah, and, um, Masterclass. <clears throat> and Masterclass. But I wanted to bring the, the thing that I do best also, which is tell a story emotionally. Use the hit you in the field, because we can educate you. Right, mm -hmm. we can inform you, 
We can even present you with all these things visually. But if you don't feel, there is no point in telling all of this because it's to inspire. And uh, narrative forms inspire, right? The, the uh, documentaries tend to, even though they can give you some emotional, they tend to just be information passing or information dumping. And uh, generally how they like to maybe give you a few emotions is it tends to lead on the negative. This bad thing happened. When we want to lead on the positive to throw inspiration, this is your past. But we also, want, so the feeling portion of it is, let's bring the narrative form into it and present the, um, the moments that inspire, the moments that make major decision, major decisions are happening. Um, the moments that maybe someone, uh, 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 someone died, those moments that a human being has gone through that they can feel and say, yes, they're like me, but they're also exceptional when they make those choices. So that's what we want to bring to, that's what I, uh, one thing I bring to the table. Other things to bring to the table is how we have our, how, where our history comes from. The continent is important. That's where we get so much of our past. So the African continent, uh, the people of Ghana, the people of Nigeria, the Togo people, all the West African people overall, that whole West Africa, the Bantu language speaking people that traveled and, and, and migrated back and forth due to the hummus in the soil. So they had to do the slash and burn techniques to you know, pass back and forth. The ones that they, they shared their culture because the moment you go move into a space and you learn the language is the moment that you become part of that culture. So those people were integrating. So they're so connected, but we are, and who we are are Jamaican Africans, right? Even though we're out of many one people, 92% of our people are Jamaican, are Africans, and we're Jamaican Africans. So that's an important tenet to link to. So folklore is a huge inspiration in, in, in being a structure and telling these stories. And those that folklore is so complex in its understanding and so layered in its forms for eons upon eons that it had to be an, uh, uh, the uh, foundational structure in which we build these stories on to remind people how important, how wonderful the treasures of their past is. And so that foundation is what we're linking to build these stories. Boy, I love it. I love it. All right. So Charles, um, you know, I almost slip and call it Charlie. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Charles, um, the, the first project is Queen Nanny. Right? Is that is it is it that is it one thing that's coming out, or are you putting out three or four at a time? How is it going to work? All right. So what we're doing, the product is multi-dimensional, right? Okay. And so um, there are five real pieces to the project. There is um, there's a ten part docu series, right? Ten part docu series um, is a chronological journey through our national heroes of Jamaica's history, from Queen Annie to Bustamante with a transitional e episode, which kind of talks about how those individuals inspired heroism in others, what heroism means to Jamaica, how did the whole national heroes distinction get um, you know, um, applied and who came up with it. So a history lesson and a little bit of transition into, okay, these are some of the additional people who have been inspired by this movement. And those are the last two episodes, one on Louise Bennett, and on Bob Marley. So I'm a huge Bob Marley fan. Huge, mm -hmm. Bob Marley fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, nevertheless, um, we wanted to see show continuation of heroism. And so that's a 10 episode. And so it's a project. So we get, everything gets released all at once in terms of the 10 episode docu series. We're just building the, the episodes one at a time or if everybody wants to go onto our JamaicanNationalHeroes.com and pledge a five hundred thousand dollar pledge today, we just create everything all at once. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait However, a minute. Wait. Let me just go on it right now. Wait. Wait. <laughs> that, that, no, man. The go out there. If you want, drop the five hundred k. Go make the pledge. You'll make it happen. And in the next three months, you guys will have it. But however, what we're doing is there are two parts of this, right? We're not rushing. We want to be able to build a community behind it. So that's what we're going to get to in a moment. But the next component of the project is also about music. We want to make sure that, you know, Jamaican music has moved the world. Talk about Bob Marley again. And you talk about how he's taken that one genre of music and spread it all over the world. But he got inspired by Marcus Garvey, 
and the message of Marcus Garvey is infused into all of Bob Marley's songs. And so all over the world, he's moved the hearts and minds of people. And so what we want to be able to show as well is how, you know, music and Jamaican music from not just reggae and dance, all everybody knows, but ska, mento, rock steady, all these other, you know, folk music, right? Um, you know, um, um, the Naya Bingi drums and all of these other things, right? That come into our culture. We want to bring that music and show it to the world and show it, hey, there's more to Jamaica than just this dance hall or reggae thing. And we're going to infuse it and show that how, just like when you talked about how that connects back with our ancestral African heritage and lineage, right? So that is infused into the episode that you watch there. So that's the musical component. And we're bringing on board some major artists, <laughs> can't call them in yet <laughs> but bringing us some major artists along with you know upcoming artists because a part of this project also is we want to bust some people upon this you understand at mm -hmm. the end of it we want to say that okay we were able to create some superstars the analogy i give people is in living color and how they were able to create the next generation of our um superstars like jennifer lopez and jim Carrey and a long list of people that come out of it but the other piece of the project of course is the fine art paintings and then the um the digital components and a print component digitally right now you can't get the kids off the computer so you have to reach them where they are so we have jamaicanationalheroes.com plus all of the social media instagram facebook so you go jamaica national heroes on instagram jamaica national heroes on facebook you know our youtube channel all of these different places which we are aggregating and centralizing the body of work about our national heroes so when you go there, you can find out everything you want about Marcus Garvey, all of his images that are there, all of the books that were written about him, all of the poems that were written about him, all of the pop references to movies or songs or posters or anything out there. We're going to be aggregating those things and centralizing them in one place so people can go there and find out the complete story about Jamaica's national heroes. And it's important for us to be telling that story so that we are able to control that narrative. Yeah. Um, so that is the piece but it's to go back to your question specifically it's a docuseries that's coming all together and right now we're focused on raising money for the first episode which is going to be about queen nanny and then we'll be building it on of course the more money we raise the more episodes we're able to build but ultimately we're going to be releasing everything all together as a single docuseries with all 10 episodes about jamaica's history through you know the um the lives of our nation all right. So, so Onif, tell me, let, let everybody know, because we only have a few more minutes left, but let everybody know where they should go. Make sure you unmute your mic, um, where, where they should go, how they can um, donate, what they're going to get when they donate. Um, and, and so just, just let everybody know. Okay. Uh, great place to go. And thank you for that is JamaicanNationalHeroes.com. All right. Is the easiest place to go. Um, or you can go to Jamaican National Heroes on the Instagram page or the Facebook page. All right. Um, those are the easiest places for you to go. When you go to those places, you will see um, the list. You get, you donate $10, you get uh, ice and mint, right? <laughs> you donate $50, $25, you get a, um, a, a hero card, Jamaican hero card plus the ice and mint, right? And you donate um, $50, you get a, a nice puzzle in itself plus the hero card plus the ice and mint. Then you want, go to uh, 125 and you get yourself amazing um, uh, nanny, nanny shirt or Bob Mar or um, a Marcus Garvey shirt, right? And then the list goes up and on where you go up to $10,000 and get all the things that are in the mix, all right? So go get $10,000, go donate $10,000 so that you can get the whole yeah, list of slew. Um, and yes, and that, that also includes an IMDB um, credit. So if you donate at that level, you literally have where you'll be listed on IMDb as an associate producer of a, a film. Which wow. is a pretty big wow. And a lot of people take my work <laughs> in our industry. A lot of people kill for those producer credits. All right? yeah. They really go crazy for producer credits in my industry because uh, it allows them, people look them up and allows them to work again additionally on more projects. So, um, you know, uh, producer credits there. So. All they have to do is donate. And the moment they donate is the moment they send us um, their uh, receipt and a photograph, and we'll give them a, make them a culture crown. Now, there's something special coming out of those culture crowns that's going to, because they're created by an art, an artist themselves right here, 
right? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. going to be a limited amount of those culture crowns now coming. So if you already have your culture crown, all right, it's going to be a special artistic item that only a few people. So once we hit 100 of the culture crowns, there will be no longer any more culture crowns being made unless you donated a specific amount. Once you go beyond uh, at the, what is it, 125 are we doing, Charles? Yeah, so what we're going to do for the individually created ones after this is $500. No. What we're going to do is on Facebook, we're going to create a platform where everyone will be able to go and get their culture crowns created. They'll be slightly different from the ones that everybody has now, right? Which will let you know that this is a unique item. But um, given the, you know, this is a legacy project and something that we're moving forward with, which we know is going to um, make waves once it hits, you know, um, once it hits that online streaming platform. Um, we know that, um, you know, those people will be able to cherish and be able to say, like, listen, I was not bandwagonist. I'm really there from day one. Same. I was there from that. You just get the culture crown at 10 toes. I was there at the first hundred. And so, you know, um, I am an artist, right? Um, and uh, very detailed about how <laughs> and where my work is presented. Um, particular is the word. Um, and so this is, I, it's a labor of love that I've put into it. Every time someone pledges right now, I send them a personal email tell them thank you because I know how important it is for people to put their money behind you. And I also take the time if they want a culture crown to create it myself. I go and I go into my app, I take their image, I take out the background, I make them look prettier than they probably were looking before, even though they're all beautiful. I clean up all the pimples that they might not want to show, you know, and make, the, make them look good. And so that is literally, you know, energy. Um, but of course that's not sustainable. And so we are going to be doing that up to a hundred, which will probably be in the next, like literally two days based on the number of pledges that we have coming in right now. However, we just really want people to, um, get behind it. And so the $500 is the mark that will basically, um, continue to create those for anyone that wants one after they've donated at least $500, but they'll so still be able to get one online. Think, um, maybe NFTs. I'm just saying, just think in that category of <laughs> nice. if you get your culture crown now, maybe that's the case. So think that that space in itself. Also, right. what do you think when you think about this, um, how uh, games like Fortnite and those games, when they do their thing, they have that skin for a limited time only mm -hmm. and people kill to get that. And they, they don't come back for maybe a year if they even come back at all. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a limited opportunity here to get that. And I'm saying, thank you, NFT. I'm not saying that's what he's going to do. I'm just saying, <laughs> consider that factor that you can have this special item in itself, non-duplicated because of what it is, all right? So mm -hmm. I'm happy to have mine with my, um, you know, me and my visage on there, <laughs> displaying for the world to enjoy. So yeah, uh, go and uh, the tiny URL, tiny URL slash uh, Jamaica Heroes, is where you want to go to just follow that link if you you can't find any of those links or if you're on my instagram page you click on my instagram profile and right there is the link that you just go right to my instagram is my the name you see here on if white and so you just click on that link and it will take you right there to it and thank you tinyurl.com slash jamaica heroes and going back the culture please because I want to make something that makes you feel that is my forte in filmmaking. That is my objective. My primary objective is to make an audience feel an emotion so they feel connected to what they see on screen and all, all those things. So um, if you want to see my work, I will be putting it up on, an, uh, on a platform soon. It's called Echoes of Winter Sunshine. That will link you to what I'm about to do for you, the audience, in making you feel. So um, when it shows up on the platform, it'll be on my Instagram. So just go follow my Instagram and you'll be able to know soon. Wonderful. All right. So, um, I want to talk about Clubhouse really quickly because you all are having a movement on Clubhouse. So uh, who wants to give me... A, a quick synopsis of what's happening on Clubhouse, because I think you all have taken it over. I don't know, but I think you all have taken it over. So who's going to give me a synopsis of what the heck you all are doing on Clubhouse? Anif, and it's, uh, it's, 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 it's the culture in 30 days. It's the culture condensed and mixed up in every aspect from our folk tales of a Nancy story and big boy story and and poems that we have amazing Jamaican poem, poets that are just 
giving you everything from our amazing DJs that come on every night and play your music and, and show the music of what it is. It is the culture amalgamated in that moment in time that we have. And if you miss it, you Sharando Farrell and how she creates Tasty's and Nancy stories. And she creates these characters out of it that you're just like, whoa, woman, you have amazing talent that just wraps me up every night in this big hug. So um, you want to come out because we also have special guests and Charles has amazing guests planned for it. Listen, they just give me a bunch of toys and I just play with them and, try and figure it out and do a bunch of stuff. So it's just like, hey, look, we've got this person. And I, I was like, okay, let me create something for the audience to feel this thing and have a moment of expression in them. And it's so amazing that the shows were originally two hours and now they're stretching to three hours because everybody wants this moment in time of what we're doing on Clubhouse. So yes, Clubhouse, it happens until June 9th. June 9th is the big mo is that moment of, of the um of the the push. So come out June 9th and we're having it every single night. Come and enjoy the culture and pledge, pledge, pledge June 9th. It's, and it's eight to ten o'clock on Clubhouse. The name of the club is called I'm Back in the Culture. Look for the club, I'm back in the culture, eight to ten every night. The room changes every night. It might be John Cobrati and Thinking Toe one night, and it could be something completely different the next night. And it comes up with creative names to keep us engaged, but nevertheless, every single night is rich and enriching for anyone that loves Jamaica and Jamaican culture, so. Well, thank you very much. Good news, Jamaica is with you all the way. And you know, we'll be doing this uh, continuously. Maybe we'll have a part two, June 9th will come and we'll have fireworks and pom-poms. So um, guys, thank you very much for sitting with us. I wanna say one love, God bless. And we wish you Godspeed with this, with this project. You're doing us proud and we appreciate you. Respect. Thank you so much. Those words mean so much. Trust me. I really All right. Love, man. Thank you. Thank you. So until next time. Thank you for checking us out on Good News Jamaica TV for content that informs, inspires, and transforms. Please like, share, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more positive Jamaica content. Walk good.